Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This is going to be a guitar effects build series of videos. I'm going to build a guitar effects pedal from scratch and bring you guys along for the ride. What I have chosen is the Rock Bottom Customizable EQ from DIYGuitarPedals.com.au. Pretty excited about this. You want to think about it like a Boss GE7, but it's more of a user-friendly DIY project. Uh, but uh, this is going to be my specific example, but I'm also going to kind of walk you through the project as a whole. Hopefully a lot of these tips and tricks could apply to any project that you guys are going to do. So first and foremost, you need to pick your circuit that you want to build. Now I have chosen this rock bottom. I've built a number of these DIYGuitarPedals.com.au circuits, and I know Eric, one of the creators here, and uh, they've got some great stuff that I'd highly recommend. Some other places that I purchased from before would be like BYOC, Build Your Own Clone, uh, GGG, General Guitar Gadgets, uh, PedalPCB.com, Mad Bean. There are a number of places that offer PCBs, and uh, those are nice because they typically, uh, you can buy kits at some of those places, so like BYOC and General Guitar Gadgets have pretty nice full kits. Uh, then they kind of get everything in one fell swoop for you, makes it a little more user-friendly. Uh, but some of the other places have a little more variety and selection, and so then, but then you have to do a little bit more of the work yourself. But I like working off of a PCB because then I know that the uh, end result is going to be pretty reliable. I know that the circuit works, and there's a lot of potential PCBs out there to choose from. So I, I think it's a pretty great option. But there are other build options that you could go with. I have built pedals point to point before. You could get like um, like a perf board or a um, like a electronics um, prototype board, something like this it would kind of be what you would be working with. Um, I've bought a bunch of these, I think, off of Amazon that I've used before. So they, they have these, these traces where you can place your components in, and then you basically use the legs of the resistors and capacitors to connect, connect to one to another, and you build off of the schematic. But uh, um, I don't love that as much. It's a lot more user error, user error room for user error because you kind of have to build the circuit yourself point to point. But there's also things like like Vero board, um, which I don't have a lot of experience with, but that's kind of an in-between solution. But um, I guess that's kind of why I come back to PCBs. I think that they're pretty reliable and form a great product in the end. So that's what I'm going to go with. Now, with this, because I'm just buying the the PCB, you need to find right here, there's the build doc and schematic. So that comes to this document right here. And before you proceed, I would read through this with some detail. Now, the one thing I really like about this these DIY guitar pedals projects is they've got a pretty thorough schematic, which you can see here. And they've got a, you know, this is like a 20-page PDF, which has which I love. I love having that level of depth. And, and what you really need to start off with is this right here. It's called the Bill of Materials. And this will lay out all of the components that you need to populate the board. And there also may be some discussion about mods, like this gives you some modifications that you can make, which is really nice. Um, but this kind of bill of materials gives you an idea of what the specific components that you're going to need to purchase to make this PCB work. And it's on you to source those. So let's talk about how we do that. Um, this is Tata Electronics is the website that I use a lot to buy stuff from. Uh, I think the prices are pretty good. And the quality of components has been pretty high, and the selection is really nice. So for guitar pedal building, I think this is a really good website. I've also purchased a number of components from Small Bear. Small Bear, I prefer to find things that are a little more rare or harder to find. So for example, if you want to get like matched germanium transistors for a fuzz face, this is a great website for that. Or like the other day, I was looking at building like a an analog bucket brigade chorus, and it uses a specific type of IC chip. Well, Small Bear is has a pretty good selection of some of those types of components, whereas Tata is a little bit more kind of general purpose, uh, meaning it's going to have your very common items at a good price, but it's not necessarily going to have more of those unique or specific items. So what you would do is you basically take this bill of materials and you start entering all these components in at Tata and, and you put them into your cart and you make your order. Now one little thought that I have here as well is um, it's kind of nice if you start to build up a little bit of a library of parts, meaning 
you know, for these 10 nanofarad film capacitors, um, you know, if, if you if you do a search for 10, I don't know if, if nanofarad is going to work. It, it looks like it does. So these are four cents a piece. So if it was me, personally, <clears throat> you know, you've, if you look, you've got one, two, looks like three 10 nanofarads. I personally would probably choose to just buy like 10 because at four cents a piece, I mean, they're so inexpensive that I would just choose to take whatever parts that you've got and just start building up an extra selection of them. And then you, if you basically do that for all your capacitors and resistors, you're going to start to build up a library of the more commonly used values that you can use for future projects. And you can start building up your stock that way. Which is nice, because if you ever need to make a repair, or if you want to make a modification, you maybe will have a good stock in supply. And also, it's still relatively inexpensive. You're not spending a ton of money on stuff. And you're getting components that you know kind of work in these common circuits. You know, like a 10K resistor. You're going to use a 10K resistor in pretty much every build that you would ever embark on. Or a TL072 is a pretty common IC. Or a 1N401 diode is, again, a very, very common you know, a lot of these parts are ones you're going to see in a lot of other builds. Um, the other alternative option that I personally actually have gone down is this, where I've built up my supply in bulk. And so if you look up like a resistor kit, you might find some of these. I don't remember exactly which one of these I've bought in the past, but I have bought, I think, maybe one or two of these. And then you could do the same thing like with a capacitor kit. Now, capacitors are a little bit different because it's a more complicated than resistors. Like if you're doing pedals, you can just get one eighth or one quarter watt uh, metal film resistors. Something like this would be perfectly fine. And if you're getting values from one ohm to 10 meg, that's going to cover everything you would ever need. I mean, this something like this would be perfect. With capacitors, it's a little bit weird because um, capacitors are generally spaced out. So, like, your very, very low values, like, let's go back to our bill of materials. These ceramic capacitors are typically used in the picofarad range. So, we got 680 picofarad, 150 picofarad. The ceramic capacitors are really the only option that you've got at those very, very small values. So, like, right here, this is a ceramic kit. It goes 10 picofarad to 10 nanofarad. That's more on the lower end. Whereas this set of, um, these two sets of electrolytic capacitors are higher. They go from 0.1 to 1,000 UF. So um, you're probably going to need a couple of different kits. You know, ceram just as a general rule of thumb, ceramic covers very low values in the picofarad range. Your film capacitors cover more of the mid-range, kind of in the nanofarad range. And then your electrolytics kind of take it from about this one... UF range all the way on up, 1, 10, 47, 100. Uh, these are more common for the electro electrolytic range. And and the idea there is I personally prefer doing that because I like to have the full arsenal of resistors. So, for example, as I've been learning about circuits, you know, maybe you want to tweak the value of a certain resistor and you just want to experiment with it. Maybe it calls for a 100K, but you want to try values from 70K to 130K. You know, if you have um, one of these these resistor kits, you will have pretty close values within that range to test different values out. It's also nice if you're doing breadboarding to have that variety. Um, and, and, and also... I like it because I can order some PCBs and feel pretty confident that I've got all of the resistors and capacitors that I would need, and I can really just focus on more of these specialty components like the diodes, the ICs, the potentiometers, that kind of stuff. Um, but I also would admit that, so with this, there's, there's 1,280 resistors. You are never going to use all those. I guarantee it. There's just no way. And so... You do, you're going to have excess, you're going to need to organize them. It's going to be a little more of a process to go through. But in my mind, I kind of just enjoy that. That's part of the part of the hobby that I kind of like, is having some of that capability. So that's kind of my preference. But um, yeah, so those are kind of the different ways you can go about sourcing all of your components. 
uh, that's really the end of this first video. Once you have identified the circuit that you want to use, you've read through the the doc build documents, you've located your build materials, and you've ordered your components. That's really kind of step one uh, before we keep going. So that's the end of this video. If you guys have any thoughts or questions or concerns about sourcing uh, components or, or parts for a build, please leave a comment down below. Any tips and tricks too would be welcome. And stay tuned for the next episode coming here shortly. Thanks. See you again soon. Bye.